Okay, good afternoon, everyone. So we are at, uh, we've come to our four o'clock now, so we will um, commence, but of course, anyone still coming in, uh, feel free to, um, to join the conversation. Um, we will be having a question and answer at the end of this segment, um, so we can happily answer any of your questions there. Um, so just type those in the, the question and answer section there, um, and then our lovely Liz Laws will um, be assisting to address those. Uh, so today, I am actually Ramona Cuter. I'm the sales executive for Coral Expeditions. And then joining me, I also have Liz Soares, who are, is our National Sales Distribution Manager. And then we also have the lovely Marisha. Uh, so Marisha is one of our expedition leaders and also one of our master reef guides. Um, so a wealth of knowledge. You can see her immersed there in a fishbowl at the background there. Um, so great love for the Great Barrier Reef. So introductions for you, as I mentioned. Um, Liz is actually going to be starting off for you. So she'll be kicking off with some of those um, to the, the sales safe that we have seen a few people have recently. Um, and then we'll actually be handing over to, um, to Marisha shortly as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ramona. Um, as Ramona says, my name is Liz Soares. I'm the, the National Sales Manager here at uh, Expedition. So I would just like to take a couple of minutes um, just before Ramona and Marisha's um, presentation, just to, to um, just explain what the situation where our company is at the moment. Um, and thank you for taking your time to come and listen to our webinar. Um, we are in a very exciting phase at the moment. Um, as you'll very probably be aware, the tourism industry has had a, a quite a tough year um, for the last six months. Our ships have actually been tied up safely here in, in Cairns, in the Cairns Harbour. Um, but we're excited to be able to say that on the 14th of October, we'll be actually setting sail for the first time in six months. So, so in order to do that, we put a lot of, um, of work to make sure that the We've created a safe environment, not only for you, our guests, but also for our crew as well. Um, it's a cautious market at the moment. Everybody obviously is a little bit um, wanting to have a full understanding on how we are able to cruise at this particular time, how we're going to be safe when we're cruising at this particular time, and how we've handled and put our measures in place to make sure that your trip will be a memorable one when you come out with us out onto the reef as well. So, um, I have a small ship cruising. Um, we have ships that have under 100 guests. So Coral Discoverer will actually be the ship that cruises on the on the Great Barrier Reef over this next uh, um, season, which is through to December. She only takes 72 guests on board. So she's small and she's intimate. Um, social spatial distancing on there is just a, um, a natural thing that is with our company. If you are um, to end up traveling on Coral Adventure or our newest ship, which is coming onto our fleet, Coral Geographer, um, whilst they are commissioned to take actually 120 guests during this COVID period, we'll actually be only taking, maxing that at 100 guests on board our ships. Um, we're Australian flagged expedition ships, we're Australian crewed and the majority of our passengers are Australian as well. So we're really in a, a great space uh, to be able to offer that, um, you know, comfort when you're actually travelling with us. Our whole um, DNA of our, our cruises are remote nature-based destinations. So we'll be taking you into these beautiful remote areas out to the outer reef. You couldn't get more safer than there, being out there in the marine line. Um, we'll be taking you to beautiful sandy caves. We'll be taking you to isolated areas so, as well. So really where we are going is going to be uh, one of the safest environments for you. On a small ship, social distancing will be taken on board as well. So you'll be quite comfortable as well. Um, we're going in and out of Cairns. Now, Cairns has had uh, no community cases um, in the region for quite some time. So again, it's another safe um, environment for you to be, um, to go in there. So it's a very much um, a, an easy way for us to travel. So we've put a lot of time and a lot of effort in what we call our sail safe plan. Um, how do we plan to get back onto the water? And as I said, our priority is for you, our guests, and um, for our crew to make sure that that's a, a great environment. So we've really divided it up into two facets. So there's the prevention phase as well as the mitigation. So during the um, prevention phase, um, and if, uh, our success will be riding on this. And as I said, we've put a lot of work behind this. Um, and it's very critical um, that we take a rigorous approach. So at about 10 days, or at 10 days, we're asking you to actually go and visit your GP to get a health, um, health um, declaration. There's, you'll have a health declaration form to complete. It's a quick and um, uh, easy process. Send that through back to Coral Expeditions. Um, during the time between that 10 days through to um, up to 72 hours beforehand, we are, do actually ask you to reduce your risk when you're actually out there um, 
and traveling, et cetera, to get to the cruise. So you know, do, do take uh, note of social distancing, uh, wear a mask if you, um, you feel that's more, you're more comfortable to do so. Um, and just yeah, be aware of your environment um, when you're going in the seven days or so before you actually come out onto the cruise. At 72 to 60 hours, there's the, um, the dominant time, we will be asking all of our guests and our crew um, and anybody who's associated with the ship to undergo a PCR test. So once that test, the results will come back to us. Um, once you've got, we've got a, um, a negative test so that you know, nobody has corona, then we'll actually be able to um, travel safely on board um, the ship. So as I said, the test has taken between 72 hours and 60 hours um, prior to cruising. Once we're actually on board the ship, we will actually um, be able to do all, you know, we'll take a uh, spacious, next slide please. Um, so we may, you know, obviously do social awareness, we'll have open space and, um, and social distancing on board the ship, we'll have a ship doctor on board there as well. You'll find that there'll be a lot of hand, um, there'll be hand sanitizers um, as well, uh, spaced around the ship. But really, they're only just really fine tweaks to what we actually have always had placed in, on board our ships anyway. So the, true, the crew are actually fully trained as well. Um, we have a, um, a, a strong food and safety program as well. So rather than the buffet meals that we had in previously, um, we'll be having more family and plate dishes brought to the table as well. So we've had to make some small tweaks to that to ensure the safety as well. Um, but the, the actual overall um, experience on board the ship and during your cruise will be a true coral expedition um, experience as well. So um, as I said, it's a wonderful way to travel. You're probably going to be traveling in one of the most safest environments um, that you can. Um, as I said, we go to the most beautiful remote and um, locations with the experienced guides, experienced crew, um, and we look forward to welcoming you on board. So as I, said, I just wanted to take these few minutes. Um, if you did want to review uh, the um, Sail Safe program, it is available on our website. So that's an image there on the website, which is on the top left hand corner you'll say it says COVID-19 information. If you click through on that tab it will give you a full um, information all about our sail safe plan. But also if you have gone, gone and booked onto that um, one of our cruises, so we've got nine cruises between now and um, December. First one out as I mentioned is on the 14th of October so we're very excited about that. Um, if you are booked on one, you're getting all this information through to you in a timely manner. So you're able to make those appointments with the GP, be prepared for your um, PCR test and um, get ready to have an amazing experience back out cruising the world again. Um, so I'm going to pass this back through to Ramona and Marisha. Um, Marisha is an amazing uh, uh, guide or um, guest lecturer, or sorry, guest lecturer, expedition leader on board the ship for you. And she will actually be going out on our first cruises. So she's got a wealth of information and I'm sure she's uh, looking forward to, to sharing with you. Thank you. Thanks, Liz. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's um, kind of ironic as well, but we will be restarting on the reef. So, I mean, for those of you that might have uh, known Coral Expeditions history for some time, uh, we have been cruising for around 35 years. So the company first started around 35 years ago. And among the first expeditions that we actually did was out on the Great Barrier Reef. So um, I think everyone is super excited to be restarting our program and on the, the reef um, and getting back to back to nature. So I'm sure Marisha, you are definitely itching to get back out there and experience um, what our world has to offer. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, as um, you mentioned before, we haven't sailed since March. So it's been getting a little bit boring at home. <laughs> yeah, and so our first programs that we'll be offering will be our uh, out and known adventures on the Great Barrier Reef. So we'll be running those for our seven night expedition uh, through from October to December uh, in 2020. And then we'll also have an expedition on the 10th of July next year. Um, there will also be two special themed edition expeditions next year. Um, so you can see a little bit more information about those on our website, but they are a revitalise on the reef and also our citizens and science expedition. So revitalise is a bit more about the wellness components and yoga on sand caves. Um, so quite a relaxing expedition. And then our citizens and science is more of an environmental scientific approach and um, learning about the reef um, and then some conservation efforts as well. So definitely see our website for more info on those ones. Um, and then we also have one more themed expedition, which I will on, touch on for you later on. Um, and that's one of our photographers cruises. So quite exciting. So I think Marisha, you're on board for the first couple of uh, expeditions. Yeah, I'm on for the first five. 
So it's getting right in there. Getting right in there, yeah. So, I mean, we have so many highlights on this particular expedition. Um, we don't just do the reef, we do a whole assortment of land base such as the Daintree where you've got you know your beautiful heritage listed national parks, um, rainforests, we've got Cooktown as well so you've got that you know have historic elements as well and then we've got those sensational outer barrier reef locations and islands that we go to as well so I mean we would love to take you through a journey of every single destination um, but we could be here for quite some time but um, Marisha has a handful of some of her favourites which um, she's going to talk you through so over to you Marisha. Um, so, as Ramon already introduced me, um, if we have any recurring uh, travellers that are with us today, hello. Um, and I'm looking forward to travelling uh, with some of you as well. I've seen in the comments that there's a few of you joining in a week or week and a half time. Um, but I'm the marine biologist on board and I'm also a master reef guide. So, uh, my job will be to take you on the journey through the Great Barrier Reef. Um, so I'll be in the water with you, I'll be on the land with you, I'll be um, doing the glass bottom boat tours and also uh, doing the hikes as well. Um, my top five uh, spots would definitely be Osprey Reef. I'm so excited to visit the um, beautiful Osprey Reef. Uh, definitely Lizard Island as well. Just this island, it's um, just feels like you're in the middle of nowhere. Um, so it is really beautiful with its white sandy beaches and wildlife as well. Uh, definitely the ribbon reefs. So I would say ribbon reef number nine and three are my favourite. They just feel like uh, giant playgrounds, uh, really. And I would say my last one would be Fitzroy because uh, there's so much, so much fun stuff to do on Fitzroy Island. And I will let you know what uh, that is in a few slides time. So as you can see here, uh, Lizard Island, that'll be our destination on day two, if, if I remember correctly. And here on the island, um, it's the northernmost continental island that we'll be visiting. So it's quite far from the land. And what this means is that we'll have the luxury of being as far away from the mainland as possible. And also, most of the marine life will come here. So you can see on the top left screen, that big island, um, that one is actually Lizard Island. So we'll be on the Coral Discoverer and the Coral Discoverer will be anchoring just in that little bay. Uh, and that's all remain for about 24 hours, which means that um, we can get lots of activities done on the island. Uh, just on the bottom left of the screen, you can see that bay there, and that is called Watson's Bay. And that's where we'll be doing um, some morning snorkeling. And just along um, that reef edge that you can see in the picture, is where we have our famous giant um, clam garden. So that's one of the highlights uh, that a lot of our guests come um, and comment back to us, just how um, spectacular and humongous these uh, clams are. We do also get to do a hike. Uh, so the hike will be up to uh, Cook's Look. It's quite a, a high, high, high hike and it <laughs> does require a little bit of work but once you're at the top, you get uh, 360 degree views of the whole um, island. So it is quite spectacular. We do also offer some um, easier flat walks. So you can see that there's that nice long uh, stretch of beach just along Watson's Bay. Uh, that's a very popular beach to walk along. Uh, often you'll see lots of green sea turtles that come up really close to the shore. We also get um, just the little uh, crabs and the baby sharks as well. So yeah, you can see that photo of the green sea turtle. Uh, they do often make an appearance when a lot of uh, passengers are in the water. They'll come up and say hi and they usually tend to hang around a bit so they're not, uh, not too shy as well. If there's any of you who are interested in diving, we do offer diving on the cruise. So we do start our diving here on Lizard Island because as you can see from the photo, it's a nice uh, shallow, shallow area where you can practice your skills and just get familiar with the equipment just to see if it's anything that uh, you would be interested in. Uh, we do offer a unique experience at Coral Expeditions and that is a um, free, uh, free, uh, free introductory dive but that only goes for about 15 minutes um, in shallow water and it's just so you can test your gear. So that is just something we offer for those of you who aren't certified have never dived and are thinking about trying it out. 
you can um, put the gear on, see how it feels like to breathe uh, through the breathing apparatus in the water and see if it's something that um, maybe you'd like to do during the trip as well. And because we are at the Lizard Island overnight, we'll um, be able to transport you onto the beach. I will have some refreshments and also uh, some nibblies on the beach and we'll watch the sunset uh, go down before taking you back on board uh, for dinner as well. When we're on board, Marisha, we do a uh, fish feeding as well. So, I mean, given that it's been a couple of, a couple of months since we've cruised out there, I'm sure we've got some amazing hungry fish that are, are keen. <laughs> yeah, right, so we do a, a fish feeding at night time. Um, the fish are quite familiar with our routine. So you usually see them waiting around right as we're anchoring. So they come up at night and they're drawn by the lights. We do get usually the large uh, tawny reef sharks that come up. So these can get up to about two meters. And there's also the giant Queensland groper that likes to make an appearance um, off the back deck. So this one, uh, he likes to steal a lot of the food and he weighs about 200 kilos, but it's always an exciting one for us to see. And then we have uh, Osprey Reef. So this is a very exciting uh, place that we do get to visit. And it's, um, it's very unique for a company to be able to go um, to this reef because it is quite far from the mainland. So it's not something that you can do if you are on board for just one or two days, which is why it's uh, perfect that we have this seven day trip. Um, so this reef, it's about 300 kilometers northeast from Cairns. So it's quite far. And it's very special because it's a reef system that is built on top of a 2,000 meter old mountain, 2,000 meter mountain, uh, which means that you can be swimming along the edge and you have these massive drop offs. Um, they can go down to about two kilometers. And what this means is it often brings lots of um, interesting and big marine life. So there are areas where we do get to see lots of manta rays, as you can see from that ray in the picture. Um, and there are many uh, reef sharks as well that like to hang around the area. So this is a perfect spot, not just for divers and not just for snorkelers, but for those of you who also just um, want to see the system from um, the surface, we will do plenty of glass bottom boat tours around the area. Um, and with visibility up from 30 meters to 60 meters, you'll get to see a lot in this reef system small little animals there. Uh, you can see that giant potato rock cod there right near the diver. So they are known to frequent the area. More clams as well. And then from uh, Osprey Reef, we'll start making our way down uh, to the ribbon reefs. So the ribbon reefs uh, are very special uh, reefs because they are the furthest east reefs um, that you can travel to. And quite often at the end or edge of the reef is where um, Australia's continental shelf uh, finishes. So what that means is it drops down to very deep water, um, but that means that there's lots of currents and there are lots of uh, nutrients being brought in. And that's why we get to see a very thriving uh, ecosystem then. So we often, um, one thing that we notice is the further east that you travel from the mainland, uh, the healthier the reef, the reef is, and also the more fish and the more um, marine life that you see there. Uh, so you can see that, that um, this is our glass bottom boat here on the bottom right. Um, we will have that glass bottom boat with us on all of the reef stops. So what that means is you'll be able to jump on board. I'll be on there with you more than likely, and I'll be giving you a commentary about what you're seeing. So it's a good opportunity to get onto the boat as well. Um, they only go for about half an hour. You get to ask any questions about the marine life that you're seeing. And then when we get back to the main ship, you can just jump back into the water and go for another snorkel. So there's plenty of time at the reef stops to do all of these activities. Some more there. Uh, so you can see that uh, Napoleon Rass. That's a fish that we see quite often here in the ribbon reefs. Uh, with the ribbon reefs as well, so we've been going to them for quite a long time and Coral Expeditions has its own, we have our own private moorings, which means that from Osprey Reef down to the ribbon reefs um, in these remote locations, 99.9% .9 of the time, you will not see another boat 
And what that means as well is when we put you into the water and you're going for a swim, we're the only ones that are gonna be there, which means that you don't have to share that area with hundreds of other people and no one else is scaring away um, any of the marine life. So that's another special feature that we have. That's the beauty too with having our glass bottom boats and explorer tenders too, Marisha, is that it allows us to get up so nice and close to the reef systems. Yeah, that's right. So if you're diving, more than likely you'll be put onto the explorer, I mean, onto the tenders, the rubbers, and they'll take you up or down. Um, they'll plan your dive depending on where the current's going to make it as comfortable as possible. Uh, if you're snorkeling, we'll be taking you maybe on the explorer or the glass bottom boat. So yeah, with more toys to work with, we get to do more as well and get to see a bigger portion of the reef. Oh, and then the Fitzroy Island. So this island um, is quite close to Cairns, but it's often a hidden gem because a lot of people will go over to the island, but they'll actually miss out on a large portion of the attractions or the beauty of the island. So we get to um, anchor right in front of the island. We'll transport you over and there are many activities to do, which can, most of them can actually be fit in at the time, um, in the same morning. So we'll take you over to um, the Turtle Rehabilitation Center. So here in the photo, you can see uh, Jenny Gilbert. She started um, the center. So she will um, more than likely be the person that will be giving us the rundown and she'll be our guide. What she does is she usually waits uh, until we get there and she will do the uh, turtle feeding when we get there. She'll also tell us a little bit about the turtle life cycle and about what they do there at the centre. And there's plenty of time to ask her questions. And as you can see, the people are standing quite close to the tank. So you will be within arm's reach of these uh, beautiful turtles as well. In the bay that we'll be swimming in, so you can see where our ship will be anchored and that is the beach that will transport you on. We'll have the kayaks out, which means that you can go for a little paddle around. And also that bay is called Welcome Bay and it's home to so many, uh, lots of green sea turtles actually. So every time I've been there, um, I've seen at least one green sea turtle um, and they're quite friendly actually. Usually when you see them out on the reefs, uh, as soon as they see you, they're quite timid and they quickly jolt away. But here on the island, because they're quite used to seeing tourists, they're pretty friendly and placid. And usually they'll just frolic around and let you follow them. Um, we've seen as many as 10 in a day as well. But every time we've been there, we've seen at least one. Uh, we also have plenty of hikes or walks to do on the island. So uh, I'll be taking a group up that are wanting to go up to the summit. So that's the photo that you can see over there on the top left. Uh, it's about a one and a half hour return walk. There are some steep parts, but uh, we will guide you through it the uh, night before. We'll always tell you about how difficult the walk is, what you'll need to bring, and our guides will let you know as well if at all you need, um, need to be concerned for the walk. But that's the um, summit walk. And then we'll take you through a, a beautiful lush rainforest system on the way back. Or for those of you who would like to do a little bit more of a relaxed stroll, uh, we can take you to Nudie Beach, which was actually voted Australia's number one beach back in 2018. Or there is also a rainforest walk that you can go to that's called the Secret Garden. So there's um, plenty of options here on, on Fitzroy Island, sorry. Yeah, it's um, also a great place to snorkel. Um, there's multiple times I've been, oh, sorry, snorkel to kayak. Uh, multiple times I've been over to uh, Fitzroy and the kayaking there, it's, it's a beautiful little kayak. Um, so we will have those included on board as well. Um, so they're always complimentary on any of our expeditions. Um, and then it's quite easy as well. Sometimes, you know, you can see turtles popping up around you. It's, um, it's a beautiful little spot for a kayak. So definitely do that on board. It's very easy to see the turtles from a kayak, actually. They usually um, hang around. Uh, and then from Fitzroy Island, we'll be heading over to Sudbury K. So you can see this K uh, system here. Looks almost like a giant sand ray. Um, and these Ks, I find them quite special because when you're on them, you realise that you're on this, like, your own private little sand beach in the middle of the ocean. Uh, they're also very fun uh, to be on and convenient because we can drop you off 
uh, you can put your stuff down. Um, we'll set up some chairs. We'll have some um, snacks as well and plenty of uh, water and drinks. And you can just enter the water, go for a swim, go for a snorkel, or come back, play on the sand, just do whatever you like, really. Uh, it's a great K to go, um, what's that word I'm looking for? Beach combing. There's always some interesting um, marine life or artifacts that have uh, washed up on shore. So that's pretty fun uh, as well. And if we're there for the sunset, we get to see these beautiful uh, color displays of the sun setting behind mainland Australia. So it's quite special. Oh, and of course the Daintree Rainforest. So that's another thing that's uh, very, very special about this cruise because uh, we'll not, we'll, you won't be visiting just one UNESCO World Heritage Area, but two. And it's the only place in the world where you have two World Heritage Areas that are side by side. So the Daintree Rainforest is World Heritage because it is the world's oldest rainforest. It's about 180 million years old. Uh, which means it's actually been around since when the dinosaurs were roaming. Uh, so it's quite amazing. Uh, we'll, when we're there, we'll take you for a cruise along the Daintree River. And uh, we have a special treat for you too, because we'll be picking up a local guide who is very familiar with the area. Uh, he'll jump on board our explorer and he'll take us around to some of the best spots. And we'll also go at croc spotting. So hopefully we'll get to see some crocodiles around the river. So I know um, I mentioned a little bit before about our photography themed expedition. So thanks Mary for, Marisha for sharing some of those highlights. Um, I mean, as you can see, there's some absolutely spectacular opportunities for photography on board. Um, so we will actually be joining by two special guest photographers on one of our expeditions, which will be the 18th of November. Um, so that's actually going to be Jasmine Perry and Darren Ju, um, and they are very renowned uh, photographers with multiple awards. Um, so they're actually going to be on board sort of doing some workshops and um, doing some sort of guided underwater photography tours. Um, and helping everyone, you know, sort of learn a little bit about how to use their equipment. So um, definitely keep that one in mind, you know, if you are able to travel um, this year in November, that would be a fantastic one to get on. Um, that is a special themed edition, that one. So um, very unique. Yeah. So as you will have heard from uh, lovely Marisha there, you know, there's, there's never a shortage of expeditions to do or, or beautiful things to see. Um, what we do find is that our guest experience on shore is um, there's always something for everybody. So whether you're a, an avid snorkeler or just want to stay dry, um, you've got the opportunity for the glass bottom boat or, or just simply relaxing and enjoying and taking in the views. Um, so we usually would do a, a sunset barbecue, but with the, the current times at the moment, as you remember Liz mentioned, uh, we won't be doing any of those buffets or things like that. So um, the barbecues have just been put on hold during the, the current COVID climate, um, but we will be doing those sunset drinks. So um, those views are still spectacular and a nice place to soak up the serenity. And I think one of the things that's very unique to Coral Expeditions, um, I know there is a few people on the webinar that have traveled with us before, um, but for those who haven't, um, you can see just how easy it is to actually board our Explorer tenders. Um, so these are our purpose built vessels that we actually have hydraulically lowered from the back of our ship. Um, and they allow you to just walk on and off really easily from the back deck um, out onto our Explorer tender and then hydraulically lowered. So, um, you've got your guest commentary on board, so you can hear all those amazing things that Marisha or one of our expedition team are pointing out for you. Um, and then we also have a marine toilet. Um, so just a couple of little bonuses, um, and not to mention fully um, covered sun canopy on there. So being that you can be out on the water for a little while, that's a fantastic bonus as well. So I'm sure that Marisha, they're definitely a little highlight that you would say makes your life much easier. Oh, definitely. I would say more so that it's just that platform. That platform is amazing. So it can just be used for obviously the Explorer, but also when we're doing our diving operations or snorkeling, we'll lower it just onto the waterline or just below. You can get on and off the platform easily and hop into the water. So it's so easy. 
Yeah, big bonus. Um, and then when you are on board, you know, there's, it's a very relaxed atmosphere on board. Uh, we do have all meal chef prepared. So all meals are inclusive. So you've got your breakfast, lunch and dinner, morning teas, afternoon teas. Um, you definitely work up an appetite snorkeling out there, um, but you're very well fed on board. Um, and then during our lunch and dinner service, you will also have included, um, you'll have either house beers and wines or house spirits, which are included with those. Um, or you do have the option now, we've just introduced uh, two premium um, wine packages. So we've got an Australian wine or a connoisseur's wine package, uh, which you can purchase as an optional extra. Um, and they allow you to um, have a number of wines allocated and then you can have uh, consume those throughout the, the cruise. So uh, we've got a little bit more info about those on our website. So feel free to jump in and, and see what types of wines are on offer. Um, and then of course, we do have those multiple bar areas around on board, because um, we know that thirsty work snorkeling, nice way to relax in the evening. Um, and then not to mention our bridge. So I think that's probably one of the most frequently visited places on board the ship. Um, everyone seems to love getting up there and having a chat to the captain. Um, it's a fantastic place to you know, soak in the sunsets or, you know, during the whale migration, for example, it's fantastic to be able to see those whales passing by um, or even just learn how to chart a course with the captain. He's more than welcome to, um, to show you how you use all those maps and navigational equipment. And then we've got our fantastic guest lounges as well. So we have um, multiple lectures throughout the expedition, um, which will be either guest lecturer presentations or expedition team presentations. Um, or even of an evening, we do have um, sometimes a, either a movie or a trivia night or things like that. And we would generally host that in our, our guest lounges. So is trivia night one of your favourites, Marisha? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I like the like guests fight over the answers. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, it's always fun. You can see the competitiveness come out. <laughs> yeah. I have to remind them it's the same half the time. <laughs> So the vessel, as Liz mentioned, that we'll be using for our expedition for our outer reef is going to be our coral discoverer. Um, so she's actually surveyed for 72 passengers um, with a maximum of the 36 staterooms. We'll be capping that at 70 though for this expedition. Um, and then we have a variety of staterooms on board. So we've got your six bridge deck balcony staterooms and then we've got your 19 promenade, um, cat A, two of the cat B, we've got six of your category A for main deck, and then we've got three of your main deck category B. Um, so we do find sometimes that those bridge deck balcony staterooms are among the first to go. Um, they are a very popular one because you can soak in those amazing views along the way. So when they've designed the ship, they've designed it in mind knowing that where we go, it's not so much about the experience on board the ship, but also the experience off the ship. So all those sensational views that you're going to take in. Um, so with that in mind, they've got really open dining room. So on all our vessels, they do have this kind of concept. Um, so you can see those beautiful views through the windows there. Um, we've got, our, as I mentioned, the lounge, a few different bar areas on board. And then with our staterooms, they've actually designed those in mind as well to, to always have some form of a beautiful view. Um, all of our staterooms are outward facing. So that means every stateroom does have a window of, um, or a balcony. So your bridge deck will have your balconies. And then the promenade deck will have the picture windows, which are quite a large picture window. And then our main deck categories will actually have your portal windows. Um, so you've got the two different categories of those as well. Um, so really nice, relaxed type of um, feel to them. Um, she was refurbished in 2016. Um, so she's still got that really nice coastal, um, cozy feel to her. And of course, we've got some, some great offers at the moment. Um, so on our website, we always have our special offers. Um, so you can view these if you wanna jump in and have a look at those again. Um, but for any departures for the Great Barrier Reef for 2020, uh, we do actually have a special offer where you've got a 500 per person travel credit plus one night free accommodation here in Cairns. Um, and then we've also got some options for no solo supplement. Um, so if you are traveling solo, um, we do have um, limited availability on that, so ask as soon as possible, um, but we do have that option. And then we've also introduced, um, with light of, you know, the current climate, um, a 30-day flexible deposit period. 
So that allows you just that little bit more time to think about that, um, you know, with the, the uncertainties at the moment, um, and then also complementary deposit protection. So we've introduced that as well. So that allows you um, a complementary deposit protection where you can move your um, deposit through to another booking in the event um, that you need, do need to change um, or, you know, COVID restrictions, etc. So, um, and then we've also got uh, consecutive cruising where you've got 10% saving on adjoining cruises. Um, so we've often got um, some great little deals around, but that 10% is always ongoing. And I'm pretty sure there's a few people online that um, have actually traveled with us a few times. I could see some of those popping up. Um, so once you've traveled with us before, um, you will actually be an Explorers Club member. Um, and that allows you some, um, some great benefits. So you'll get um, discounts off your um, future cruises, um, be it five, 10 percent, depending on your, your level. Um, and then well, as well as some other little bonuses on board too. So definitely when you are booking your next expedition, um, if you have traveled with us before, um, just remember to mention that as well so that you can have that saving passed on. So I could see there was um, a few questions there. So you're welcome to um, either reach out to um, either of our team um, or to our reservations team, um, our friendly team at explore at coralexpeditions.com. Um, or our website is also um, jam-packed with lots of information for you. Um, was there any questions? I could see there yes, was. Ramona, I do see a few questions that have come through. So, and there's um, one or two that uh, I know Marisha would certainly like to answer. Um, mm -hmm. Firstly, we have, um, is the research um, station still working on Lizard Island? And is, is so is it possible that we're going to be visiting there? Um, so, yes, as far as I'm aware, it is still open. But what I'd have to do is I'm going to um, this week actually reach out to the managers uh, and see what their rules are now with the COVID uh, situation. But also uh, getting to the research station, it's uh, subject to the tide. So in order for us to get across um, to land on the beach for the research station, we do need to have a specific tide for our explorers uh, to get across there. So um, that'll be determined um, from trip to trip. Great. I mean, I have another one actually. It's again, I think it's found to you, Marisha, is what's the best time to see the whales? Okay, so the whales, um, they've just finished. They're all heading back home. So the best time to see it um, would definitely be around June, July. I think on the reef, the last two years, we've seen the most in, around, on, in August. Um, so that's when they come up. They start migrating. And that's the... Um, the hump head. Right. But you were saying earlier that Osprey's got amazing, uh, amazing marine life at the moment at this time of the year with everything coming and starting to warm up as well. So yeah. So this, this is an amazing time uh, to go to the reef because the water's getting warmer and uh, what that means is all the marine life is getting a little bit excited. Uh, they start their mating rituals and uh, we'll see new life uh, coming to life on the Great Barrier Reef as well. So uh, it is also the time for the coral spawning. Uh, coral spawning uh, will be happening, I'm not sure what the exact dates are for this year, but definitely um, at the end of October in November sometime. And I think there was even talk that it could possibly happen at the start of December. Um, so I'm not, not too sure. We need to get, wait until we get a little bit closer um, to the end of this month until we can see um, when they're predicting that the coral spawning will happen. But it's definitely due to happen within the next uh, one and a half months. Okay, so we've got quite a number of questions coming through on um, our, co our sales safe plan and our COVID-19 plan. Um, so one of the questions that we've had is that the paperwork actually says for the PCR test, any time between 72 to 24 hours for the test. Now that's right, it does say that between 72 to 24, but we find that the ultimate time is actually between 72 and 60 hours to ensure that we get the test results sent back through to us and that we're able to process them in a timely manner to ensure that um, because everybody on board the ship, both crew as well as guests, have, have got to have a, a negative um, test be up to before they're able to board. So 72 to 60 hours is the ultimate time. If it's a little bit, um, you know, if it's you know, 58, 50 hours, then we just have to make sure that we get the test 
results um, back in time for you. Please don't do it before 72 hours. Um, it is actually um, time stamped um, at 73 um, plus hours, it won't be valid. So please be sure of that one. Um, the other question I had is um, why would we on COVID testing, having done all the COVID testing before even boarding, why were we actually going through the processes and the mitigation process whilst we we're on board, such as social distancing? Well, we are doing that. Um, it, as I said, it's um, all about being ensuring that um, we're compliant at all times. Um, one of the things is social distancing. Um, we're only really tweaking your cruise. So it'll be times when you're, say, in the lecture lounge, there are social distancing issues you know, will be taking place. Or if you're at your, um, for your meal, so we won't be running a buffet anymore, um, rather than you'll be getting table service and platters brought to your table. So that's what we call them in regards to compliance to our um, sales safe plan. So the actual feel of the trip will be still all about coral expeditions, getting you out those, those beautiful regions, but we do have to keep in mind the environment that we are, are actually living in as well. Um, another question we had was, uh, will we be contacting all um, passengers um, separately prior to COVID? Everyone who's actually on a confirmed um, reservation with Coral Expeditions will have had access to, or will be sent the sail safe plan. Um, they'll also, as I said, access it via the website. You'll get a full um, health questionnaire, et cetera. It'll all come to you in a timely manner um, so that you'd be very aware of what you actually have to do um, at what particular timeframes. Um, if you do have any questions at all, please feel free to ring through to the, um, the team and the reservations team on the numbers that Ramona had up on the screen as well. Um, so I think that at the moment, um, we do have another one here for you, uh, here, Marisha. Are there any concern about stingers and what, um, firstly, let's go for that. Are there any concerns about stingers in the region? Uh, well, uh, in in the outer reefs areas that we'll be going to, the chances of there being the dangerous marine stingers are very low. Uh, in saying so, though, from October to about March or April, so this time um, is really the time when they say that the stingers uh, may be present. So we do recommend that you do go out uh, with the stinger suits. Um, we can't say for certain if they're going to be there or if they're not because these jellyfish are very little and as you're aware as well, they're quite transparent. So in the water, it's very hard to tell if, if they're there. Uh, we do offer uh, that you, you can purchase the singer suits on board. Um, they're very thin and very lightweight. So when you're in the water with them, it actually, it doesn't feel like you're wearing anything. But by all means, if you do have your own, um, we do recommend that you do bring your own but everything else will be supplied for you. So we do have uh, masks, snorkels and fins. Uh, they, the crew will fit you with the right fitting equipment and then they'll be yours to hold on to for the rest of the trip. So that's the only, um, the only thing that you'll have to purchase or supply yourself is the stinger suit. I can see here as well this comment uh, whether we have underwater cameras for hire. Yep. Uh, no, we don't. Some of the crew do have their own um, personal underwater cameras. I know the dive instructors do, and they are more than happy uh, to take many of photos. And usually at the end of the cruise, um, they can share them personally with you or those photos from the dive and from underwater, uh, the underwater world will be shared with everybody as well. Okay, we've got a couple more on the uh, sail safe plan. Um, are masks required on board? You wouldn't believe it. I first thought that was mass snorkeling. Um, and diving. No, um, mask for COVID. Um, we do provide masks. They will be on board for you if you are, you do wish to um, to wear them, but they're not compulsory to wear. And the other one was, um, were the furnitures and surfaces dis um, disinfected frequently? Yes, they will be a minimum of four times um, per day. And we'll also be doing um, things like, you know, there'll be temperature testing, there'll be a doctor on board, as I mentioned or we'll be doing physical distancing as well. Um, so we'll avoid having large groups at any time. So we will be compliant with our sales safe plan, but full details of that sales safe plan can be found on the, on the actual website as well. Um, we do have a couple more um, and we have got, uh, someone has a son who um, wants to dive and there is medical requirements. Um, so what would the, the medical requirements required? Uh, what would the, the process, uh, Marisha, for if she okay. wants to dive on the trip? Uh, well, first we do say that you do need, a, um, you need to get a medical from your doctor to be clear for diving, but that's only uh, if there are pre-existing health concerns. 
So what you can do is if you just go online, if you look at uh, the PADI form for a dive and see what requirement, like health requirements uh, you need. If at all you tick yes, so for example, I know asthma is a big one um, and certain medications, then you just need to see your GP. Tell your GP that you need a diving medical just for him to clear and say um, that yes, he thinks that it's okay if you dive. If your health is um, okay and if you're not taking any prescribed medications, then no, that is, that's fine. You will not need to have a medical done. Yes, but if you've got any further information, if you want any further information about the um, snorkeling or diving on board, um, we'll be happy to uh, um, assist you with that as well um, through our reservations. And uh, then we have another question here from Tony. Uh, will there be citizen science opportunities um, associated with re snapshot studies announced on the mainstream media today? Any chance of seeing the minke whales on the July 2021 trip? Who's that for? Oh, how, how about Marisha or Ravana? <laughs> Either or. Uh, um, I mean, yeah, traditionally minke whales are, are reasonably common um, around that time. Um, of course, being nature, I guess, we, we can't predict what they do. But um, yeah, quite, quite commonly, you will see the, the whales start to migrate through that time. So they'll sort of, you know, my experience is um, generally June, you start to see the migrations, they'll sort of make their way back. So I've even seen them as late as October occasionally. Um, I'm a can local, but occasionally, even as late as October, they have occasionally seen those through there. But I mean, any any different thoughts from you, Marisha? Uh, you're more, it's more likely that you'll see the humpback whale over a minke. But like Ramona said, the minkies are there, but it's far more common just to see the humpbacks. Yeah. Okay, and then we have another question. It's actually, um, this is quite a, a very good question, actually. Uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID precautions sound great, but we're also interested in reversing the damage on the reef. How carbon neutral are your vessels, for instance? Um, I'm reluctant to throw my oars uh, with a fossil fuel power expedition. Um, so, I mean, for my answer for that one, we are um, ecotourism. We have actually got uh, the... Um, the GSTC Eco Certificate. We were approved for that back in 2015 and we're going for advanced as well. Um, and we're heavily um, involved in a lot of sustainable initiatives on the reef. So um, such as the Eye of the Reef um, and Marisha, you'd be way better for answering this. You know, we've got uh, a number of programs. We work with the, um, the Fitzroy Island Turtle Sanctuary with the Lizard Island Research. Um, so there's a number of, as well. And then we have a sustainable f and um, progress, sorry, uh, food and beverage um, process as well, where we reduce waste um, and we partner with um, organic and fair trade suppliers to, to deliver food and beverages experiences, um, we believe are in, in line. So, um, and even down to our sunscreen, we actually have marine friendly um, sunscreen on board all of our vessels as well. Rich, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, you'll find that, oh, that is a good question, thank you for asking. Um, you'll find that when you go to the Great Barrier Reef, if you have not been already, that uh, not only do we, but also all majority of um, the tourism operators, they look after the reef. So it is pristine. There is, we never see rubbish floating around and they really do look after uh, this livelihood just so that we can obviously see it in the future and so that everybody can enjoy it just the way it's today. And I think, uh, well, there's guys both, uh, here's, will, will there be doctor, doctor on board? Yes, there will um, as well. So there's just, I wanna just answer one more question, sorry. So um, yeah. they, the issues with the stingers. So the stingers is, um, we do get asked about this quite often because uh, we hear about it in the media a lot, the killer jellyfish. Um, and if you're gonna be in the water quite often, it's understandable that you're worried. But in my whole time working on the Great Barrier Reef, which has been um, nine years now, not once have I had an issue with these Irukandji jellyfish. And that's because we take uh, precautions just to make sure that we limit um, our exposure to that. So like I mentioned before, when the water starts getting warmer, which is this current period up until um, March, April, then there is a chance that they will be in the area. Um, they, have been, they have been spotted when they do the tests and they um, grab them with the nets, and that's along the coastlines. 
But like I said, we're not 100% sure if they're going to be in the areas we're swimming in or not, which is why we do tell, um, tell you to just make sure that you do wear some protection in the water um, from them, just to limit your exposure. Um, with the stinger suits, we do have them on board, but because they're quite tight fitting and they're very personal, uh, we do sell them so that you can buy them and keep them and reuse them in the future. Um, they come at a low cost of, if I'm correct, about $30 for the stinger suit. That's yours to keep. And um, our stinger suits, like I said, they're very nice and light. Uh, they protect you a little bit from the sun as well when you're snorkeling and they're much cheaper than what you would find um, in the dive shops and the snorkel shops as well. So we got any more questions that are coming through? Um, any more thing for us? I can see that there has been any that we've missed but I mean, if we have missed any of your questions at all and you do want to get an answer from us, absolutely feel free to reach out um, and we can happily answer those for you. Well, Can't there is one here that was about the doctor. That? Sorry, Ramona. There is one here about the doctor. Um, originally, um, if our reservations team said that there was not going to be a doctor on board, originally that was the case. Um, we were only putting a doctor on board for cruises that were 10 days or more. That's been and uh, the cruises um, on the reef will actually have the doctor on board and, as I said, the temperature testing on a daily basis as well for you. And another question we have is um, diving with nitrox. Marisha, that is definitely a your question. Yeah. Um, no, no. <laughs> we do the, um, the standard oxygen and nitrogen and that's it. Mixture. Yeah, they're generally a, um, like a highly advanced um, vessel would use those, like a highly advanced diver would you so? So it's not something we would usually keep on board. Yeah. Um, I can see there's another question too about drones. Um, can you bring drones to the beaches? Um, so generally, no. I mean, there is um, quite a lot of restrictions around drone use um, in the, the marinas and also out on the reef. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Marisha, but it also can sometimes, um, if we're not aware of it, can affect navigational equipment. Is that correct? That is, that is correct. Um, with the drone one, yeah, that's a funny one. If you do have a lot, the license and the appropriate um, paperwork filed, then by all means bring it on board. And then it is, um, it's just up to our captain. So by all means, uh, we can talk to the captain and or the master for you, or you can ask him or her. And um, if it's possible, we'll arrange something. But yeah, that's definitely up to whatever our captain that we have on the ocean. Yeah, and provided you've got the, the relevant permits. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Don't think there's any others that I can see coming through. Um, yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for attending. Um, we will have a copy of this recording, which we will be sharing uh, via an email, so you're welcome to, to re-watch it if you wish. Um, and then we'll also be sharing um, a version of it to our Coral Expeditions Facebook page in the coming days as well. Um, so feel free to jump in there and, and re-watch that one again or, or share it with your friends. So, oh, I have more questions have just actually popped up, I think, maybe. <laughs> it, it was a thank you for my... Oh, it was a thank you? Okay, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> and thank you, thank you so much, ourselves. Yeah, perfect. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining and um, we look forward to welcoming you on board. Yep, all excited. Yeah, countdown's on. Thank you. Thank you.